What's going on folks? I said what's going on good people? Today we got a review and we will be covering Street Fighter 5 Arcade Edition Akuma. I waited and waited and waited to get this figure because I didn't quite like the way they did it the first time with the main and all that even though it was accurate to the Street Fighter 5 uh, game but I like them I like them in the man bun more more so um, so give you a look at the box side of the box looks like this the other side of the box is the mirror image of the right side that I just shown and then you got your front style window packaging and such turn it around to the back and then you have various pictures of Akuma and the stand that it comes with and also his effects um, and it does have a little bio write up, you know, his gender, which is male, birthplace unknown, 5'10", weight, 199 pounds. Come on, Akuma, you couldn't just have, get one more pound to make it an even 200? I'd, just one cheeseburger away from 200, that's all I'm saying. Um, but anyway, uh, skills unknown, dislikes unknown, job affiliation unknown, fighting style, shizitsu, shizitsu. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce the rest of those, but uh, you do got the UPC right here, and this was ordered uh, f directly from the Bluefin site um, about two weeks ago. This figure I bought for $35, and it ended up being $41 um, shipped, so very grateful to uh, hop on a good deal like this, but uh, we didn't come here to review the box, did we? Hell nah, we came here to review the figure. So let's break this bad boy open and see what he's really about. But jam, here we go. Akuma, or Goki, as he was previously called, fresh and straight out of the packaging. And I must say, this figure looks amazing. Comes with a quite bit of accessories, we'll dig into that later. But the look and the feel of this figure is amazing I'm, I'm really digging it but i'll show you more in depth and why i'm digging it and why it impressed me straight and fresh out of the packaging okay so first off i really do like the weathering the weathering that they added to uh in the gi looks really nice here you can see the weathering of the uh the straps that uh, ties around his waist of the gi. I really, really do dig that. So you can see some weather in there. And also here in the back side, have more weathering. And the prayer beads looks very nice. And they also, they're stretchable. So you can stretch that. It, it's done with the uh, elastic type string, which is also very nice. Then you have the sandals here, which is also done very nice, like that. And also the sandals are removable, so you can slip the sandals on and off. So, uh, see here. That's nice. That's nice. And you can slip them back on. And when you slip them back on, they do fit snug right in between the toe there so that, that that's a good touch that uh, Storm Collectibles added with that um, so yeah this is a very nice figure um, so we'll dig into some of these accessories here so you can see exactly what um, comes with this figure if you uh, do decide to purchase this figure so of course in packaging he comes with these two two closed fists here just like this here two closed um, or joined together karate chop hands like this here so you get two of those and also for the uh, the grabbing hands you get four set, you get four grabby hands, right? So you get this, and then you get these. And they pretty much look the same, you know? Just very, very few uh, uh, difference. Or very minimum, I should say. 
All right, full, full disclosure on the hands. Now, what I had to do, I had to heat each hand up. Every time I made a switch with the hands, I had to heat them up because the hole of the inside of the, of the hand and the actual peg um, on the wrist, the wrist peg is too big to actually put in there. So um, what I had to do, I had to get a, a hot water and it was just tap water. And I basically just uh, put it in the, uh, the tap water, um, the hot tap water for about a good 30 seconds. And then I was able to um, fit the hands onto the, the wrist peg. Um, just just want to keep it real with y'all. It's not going to be easy putting these hands on. A lot of reviewers, they don't switch their hands out, so they're not going to tell you how easy or, or simple it's going to be to switch hands. So I would suggest all reviewers, if you're reviewing figs, actually make the switch so you can inform your viewers of how easy or hard it is to switch um, the, the hands. Also, you do get uh, this head here, and this is his angry looking face so you do get a another head and one more after this you also get a screaming face so there we go with that you do we do have the screaming face on here and that's looking really good as well screaming face looks really good so in total you get three uh, three interchangeable heads as we can see here, the default head is the calm head, and then we have the uh, teeth gritting head, and then as you can see in the background there, you got the screaming head. Now, as, as you can see here, we also do get a changeable gi. So as you can see in the back, the gi is playing, but we can make the switch right away. Now, I thought this was very cool of Storm Collectibles to give us the interchangeable gi. And what this interchangeable gi represents, along with the prayer, be uh, prayer beads, Akuma actually killed his master. And in doing so, he took his prayer beat, uh, his master's prayer beads, and also took his master's symbol. Now this is why they gave us uh, the interchangeable gi and the prayer beads. These beads were originally his masters. Um, so that is, that is very cool of Storm Collectibles to think of us, the, uh, the consumer uh, and the fig collector for even giving us uh, the option of doing that. Um, they could have just simply just um, put put uh, the master symbol uh, kanji on the back and called it a day in the prayer beads. But instead, we do have another gi to change in and out of. So very nice. And kudos to Storm for that. And all you simply do is take, take this off here, take the knot off, and also take uh, the belt off as well just like this here and then the, the gi comes off very very easily all right and also for the effects he comes with his fire effects that you can place on his wrist and also a fire hadouken type effect that you can uh, place on a stand and I'll show you how that works in just a second so bam with the effects of the the fire wrist effects and the actual fire fireball it will look like this coming at you and then of course we have from the side it will look like this so it gives off a nice illusion and a nice effect, especially if, you, uh, if you're a fig photographer and if you like to chop and crop your shots, you can easily do so, but a wide shot is gonna look like this. And then you have, of course, 
your fireball placed um, on the stand that is also provided by you by Storm Collectibles. And there's a hole right here at the bottom and you stick that in there. Then you also, I uh, don't know what I did with it. Uh, it's in the bag. You also get an extra, a extra piece just in case you lose this piece here that uh, attaches to the stand and also the fireball. Um, I would like to note that finding this hole <laughs> for that fireball is very difficult. Um, but that's, um, that's all the accessories that comes with uh, the Akuma figure. Now we will review and go over the articulation. All right, so articulation wise, this figure's head can look up this much here and can look down a pretty good amount. That's really chin to chest right there. Um, you do have a uh, head tilt, which is very nice. Um, also, I didn't uh, include that this top of his man bun can come on and off. So that's just a little thing that I just forgot to include. But um, the neck is on a double ball. That's why we have so much rotation and movement out of, um, out of the head. And it's, it's very nice. Okay, so the shoulders... Um, do get um, 90 and I think just a little bit a tad bit above 90 so that's really good and you do um, also have a double jointed uh, sorry double jointed elbow there and you do have rotation right up here at the um, at the shoulder and that butterfly joint works really nice and you also do have you know, the drop down function, you can raise the shoulder up, you raise the shoulder down. Very nice range of movement there. Um, also the wrist, do, you do have a pretty good movement there. Of course you can rotate and you can hinge up and hinge down and then you can also swivel the wrist and place it any way you need to because uh, if you look at the peg here, the peg is a ball, right? So all you have to do is uh, move, move it down this way turn it up or down whether you want his wrist to be in or out very good um, like I said I heated up these all the hands dropped them in hot water that way they slide on and off uh, very easily um, so now to move on to the torso you do have a nice range of motion out of that torso it is very nice and you do also have tilt as well and then he can also crunch forward this much which is a great deal and he can also crunch back um, at a good range as well so that is very nice um, you do also have a waist waist turn right here along with the diaphragm turn or the diaphragm movement so you you're getting an amazing amount of rotation out of the uh, the hips I mean I'm sorry the diaphragm and also the waist um, so you can see how easy it is to pose this Akuma with all the articulation he has going on. That is very nice that Storm Collectibles um, is putting all this articulation in such a, a beefy type of character uh, slash figure. So this is very nice. Okay, so moving on to the hips. Uh, his his uh, legs can come up about this much here. So that's really nice, good range of movement as far as kicking up and definitely a good range kicking back, very nice. Um, you do have a rotation right up here at the upper upper hip right there or, or upper thigh. And then of course, uh, double jointed knees in full effect. And then you do have also right up here at the top, you have a slight rotation there. So you do have movement there and as well as the ankles right here in the feet, they do rotate and you can't really hinge up a whole good amount, but it does come up some and you do get a toe point there and um, that works pretty decent. And then of course you do also have a, um, a toe hinge right there. So that works really good and the pivot can pivot but if you turn it and then pivot you're going to get more out of it as you can see you do have a pivot but you have to work with it to get it to pivot the way you want it to pivot but it does work and it is there it is functional so all in all this is a very very good figure as far as uh, articulation wise and the way it functions and moves 
Very nice, very nice. Uh, tons of articulation, tons of movement, and uh, very minimum, might I add, very minimum QC issues when it comes to um, this figure. Um, I, I own not a whole bunch of Storm collectibles, but the ones that I, that I do own did have quite a bit of uh, a QC issues that I'm not um, thrilled about, but at the same time, the line is still pretty good. All right, so now we'll go over a couple of size comparisons uh, with this Akuma and some other figures you may or may not have in your collection. All right, so first off, Akuma is standing at to the top of his man bun at eight and a half inches, right there to the top of that man bun. And here he is standing next to some Marvel Legends. Uh, we have a, to the right, uh, Agent Venom. And then here to the, uh, to the left, we have uh, Vibranium Black Panther Walmart exclusive. All right, now here we go to the right from Star Wars The Black Series, also by Hasbro. We have Darth Maul, and then here to the left, uh, also Hasbro made figure, Marvel Legend, Kraven. Oh man, Akuma is just towering over uh, uh, this, the, the six inch scale, as he should. All right, now here we go. To the right, we got Deathstroke. To the left, we got Superman. Superman is a uh, DC multiverse and definitely towering over these two as well. All right, now here we go. All from Storm Collectibles out there. Goro in the back. Obviously, he is probably the tallest Storm Collectibles figure. Um, and then to the left, we have Smoke. And then to the right, we have Chung Li. And it is evident that Akuma is towering over Smoke and Chung Li, but there's no way he can tower over Goro. Goro's too massive. But uh, that's how it looks scale-wise, folks. All right, so in closing, I have to give this figure an easy <laughs> 9 out of 10. This is a great figure. Um, with the uh, hand issues aside, this Akuma figure is very fun to pose, very fun to uh, mess around with and get into um, various uh, dynamic poses. Um, I would highly suggest if you are a Street Fighter fan to definitely pick this um, figure up. Um, you will not be disappointed. Um, and even if you're not a Street Fighter fan, if you just like having um, great action figures in your collection, this is definitely one to have. Um, but with that said, I hope I made your decision easy to get or not to get. Um, at the end of the day, the decision is always going to be yours. I'm just here to provide you with some useful information that you can use on your own and help decide what you want to do in your collection. So with that said, collect what you love, love what you collect. It's your boy, Plastic Attic, and I'll see you next time on the next review. Plastic Attic, out time. Almost forgot. Be patient with yourself. Be patient with your hunts. And if you're patient enough, even the egg can and will grow legs. I'm out for real, y'all. Have a good one.